Data tables are essential part of any admin panel. They help us to browse through our data by allowing us to sort and search in most effective way. Here is the data table that we're gonna build on this video. It got all features like server side sorting, search feature and pagination. We will convert this normal HTML table into more powerful data table like this. So let's build powerful reusable data table in couple of minutes with very less lines of code. Does that sound interesting? Let's get rolling. I am here in existing Laravel project. So it is multi vendor e-commerce project. You can work on any of your existing project or new Laravel project. So you'll just need a controller that will point to some blade file. So I have this resourceful controller and it is pointing to index method. So index method contains normal HTML table which loops through all of the products that we are getting from here and passing into blade file. And this is extending a seller layout file which is the default layout file that will that you'll get from the project out of the box when you install Laravel for first time with auth scaffolding. With that set, if we go to browser and visit the page, we should see the normal table like this. All right, so now let's pull in the tool that is required, which is Livewire. If you are new to Livewire, it is a tool that helps us to build interactive component without writing JavaScript. So I have a video on Livewire learn Livewire in one video. You, I will link that up on description or link might be popping up on your screen on top right corner. So let's include it using PSP. Run this command, composer require. So I've already installed it. Wait for it to finish. After that, we need to include Livewire styles and script on our layout file. So layout is, we are using this layout we will include the library styles like this. Let me zoom in a bit. And we have to include the scripts like this. We are now all set. Let's create a new data table component using livewire. So we'll run PHP artisan make livewire and we'll call it call it data table. It will create two files data table.psp and data table blade file. So both file you will find inside here app http livewire data table. This is the component which is loading livewire.data table blade file which is inside resources views livewire and data table.blade. So let's put some content here. Let's go to index.blade this blade file and we'll replace all this table with our livewire component. So this is how we include the component livewire followed by name of the blade file. So we can see that component content over here. So now let's replace, let's put all of this table inside that component. I'll cut it out from here and put that inside here. Okay, so now we have to define this items variable because now we are in, we are putting all those table inside livewire blade file. So before we are passing like this items product all and then using this compact we are passing it. Now we don't require to pass like this. We can just cut it out from here and go to our HTTP livewire data table and here we are passing that blade file and we need to pass in that items variable. All right, so we'll pass like this and make sure we, all right, so we cleared everything out from here. Now we can see our table. So the use of that controller is just to load this blade file and in blade file, we are just putting our livewire component and everything has been controlled from our livewire component. So now, there is no work of controller. So let's close everything else and focus on these two classes. And I'll open them side by side, close the sidebar. So first step, let's make it sortable. Whenever I click on name, it should sort by name. And similarly for other fields, I will add a click event on table header header. So here, wire click on clicking this table header, just call this function and pass in the name. 
So this is the string we are passing to identify which by which field we have to sort it. All right, so after adding this click event, let's go to left hand side data table and here we have to define a property. And we have to define this sort by method as well. So sort by field accepts a one parameter field that we are passing from here, name. And here we are checking if sort di and direction is ascending. By the way, we have to define that sort direction as well because sorting in while sorting, we will use order by method, Laravel method that requires two parameter. One is sort direction and sort field by which you are sorting. By the way, we are sorting on products table. If we go to products table, so here is the migration for products table. We have name field, description field, price field. So whenever we pass name, we'll order by name. So sort direction by default will be ascending. So if sort direction is ascending, we'll make this descending. So whenever someone clicks on the table header, we should toggle it once if someone clicks once, it will sort them by ascending. Whenever someone clicks again, it will sort them by descending. So we'll see that in action. Let's complete the code first. And then we are assigning this sort by equals to field name, whatever we are passing from this blade file. So right now we are passing this name. That's why we are making this sort by name. All right. So button click or table header click will make will make this sort by some data like here sorry up here and then we'll use this property to sort by in this query so let's do that so here i'll add query just to make this up on new line and then order by Okay, so order by this sort by is the field name, column name, database, database column name and sort direction whether to do it ascending or descending. All right, so with this amount of code, we are all set for sorting. So let's refresh. So sort by is null here. By default, we'll make it name. And let's see this in action. Whenever we click, it will sort it. Whenever we click again, it will sort by ascending and descending. It will just toggle between ascending and descending. So similarly, let's add uh, that for these other table header. Let's go to data table over here. And let's add this wire click for all of these table header by description by price. Let's go back. And this will toggle, this will sort by description and this by price, ascending order, descending order. Perfect. Okay, so next step is to add this sorting icon over here. And on blade file, here we'll add that icon. So I will include a parcel here and write everything on parcel. So I'll include this parcel on all of the table header where we require sorting. And now let's replace the field name and now let's create this file sort icon inside parcels so inside parcel let's clear this underscore so you might not have this blade file so i have this blade file created all right so in this blade file we are just checking if sort by is not the current field so if we see on the data table dot php this class the sort by if it is name and the field that we are passing so for name field, if this condition got true, then we'll uh, just display the muted icon. Otherwise, we'll display the up icon for ascending and down icon for descending. Let's see that in action. So whenever I click on this name, this is just to make this icon active to identify in which, which sorting filter is active currently name is active and other are inactive. So this logic is just to check that out. So this text muted will make it a bit gray and I'm using this blue color for these active ascending and descending. These are just font awesome icons. Make sure you are including font awesome. So chances are that comes by default with default installation of Laravel. 
Okay, so now our icon is also in place. Now let's move to pagination. All right, so pagination, for pagination, we just have to replace this get method with paginate and then pagination item. Let's do it 10, that's it. And over to blade file on our right, we just have to include links. So this will generate a default Laravel pagination like this. So whenever we click on page two, it, uh, it is doing page reload and getting us to page two. But we don't want this page reload. We want to do it on real time like SPA. So there is an option in Livewire. You don't have to do anything. Just use a trait called with pagination. That's it. So make sure this is imported over here. And with that one line of code, from this kind of pagination to this without page reload. Perfect. So one more thing to add on pagination is we want to display this indicator of how much result we are displaying on current page. So in order to do that, it is pretty simple. Put some code over here. Let me put that up for you. To save some typing, I'll paste that up and let me make it a bit bigger. So here, showing this first item to last item out of total item. So paginate method, whenever we use paginate method, we have access to all these method. So let's refresh. All right, so it displays like this, one out of 10, when we go to page number two, showing 11 to 20 out of 33 items. So next step, let's add over here a dropdown to alter the pagination. So for that, I will go to VS Code on this split file and put a select box so just above the table we'll put that so here is the select box with options like 2 5 10 and whenever so this is bind to per page method that um, per page attribute that we'll create in a moment over our right on data table class here instead of this hard coding page we will do this per page and that need to be defined over here by default let's let's make that 10 and here we are making that, we are binding that with this input box, select box. And whenever we select five, this per page will get five and we'll see five re results on that page. Let's see this, this on action. So suppose we want to see five results. There we go. Two results. There we go. Let's add a search input box over our right, top right corner. Let's go to our blade file and I will put this input field. So it is pretty basic input field. So it is binding to the search method and normal bootstrap. And we are debouncing it 300 milliseconds so that it won't make continuous requests. So let's create that source, our live wire component. And this source term will be whatever we type on this input box here. So right now we have nothing there. Let's here, we will include a search search and we'll pass in this search. Now we need to create this method, search method inside product. Let's go to product model inside app product. And here we have search method I've already created. So it is the scope query. So scope attribute search and here we are querying and passing the value. So where like name description, so we are checking whether it matches with name or description or price. So pretty simple query over here. And now we can use this search over here. And now let's search for ARC. There we go. So it is working out of the box. Let's search some price as well. 4863, we want to search for product with this much price. There we go. Okay, with search, we have one issue in Livewire. Let's, uh, let me show that. So suppose we are go, we go to page number two, page number three, and in page number three, we decided to search for FUGA. There we go, we, we see no result, right? So it is saying there are seven items, but we cannot see because we are on page number three, if you see on this address bar. So we need to reset this to or reset that like this. We don't want to be in page three. Now it will show. But to reset that page, whenever we search, we have a lifecycle hook on our live wire. So whenever someone changes this source, we want to reset 
the page. So there is the method on Sublight by Livewire that we can use. You can find that on description uh, documentation as well. Here re resetting page after filtering data. So here is all issue explained and here is how you fix that. So let's go to our code and let's put that method. So this is the lifecycle hook and this is the name of the attribute. So, so here we have source attribute. That's why we supply source. So whenever someone is updating search, meaning someone is searching, we will reset the page and then results will be displayed. So let's go and see that in action. Let's go to the main page. Let's go to the phase number third. And now if we search, so it is resetting our page. So there are no phase number three and we can see our result. Perfect. All right. So this is uh, the data table we just built on minimum amount of code. Hope you like this video. I'll see you on another video. Bye.